Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, terrible. Like a terrible, <laughs> terrible strategy. strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate, where we invite you to talk into a mixed menu. Today, I'll be borrowing from the timely and timeless words of Professor Patu Tomi, who, thanks to him, brings some sense and sensibility into the current atmosphere in the country. I'm looking forward to hearing from Seidu, our newest advocate, who, like me, will be talking to the nation. Ekene turns therapist and, as usual, has a question for us. Ever heard of imposter syndrome? Chuka, our inventory on music and architecture, is going eclectic, yes, papi, and he shines the light on the mental disconnect hashtag, a ghetto mindset. Uwa is here with us because Uche cannot be with us. We wish you better, Uche. And Uwa is also the second newest advocate who will be talking about narcissism vis-a-vis -vis social media. Well, you'll get to hear our responses to that very soon. But first, the ball is rightfully in my court, so see you after the break. What do you do when someone takes the words right out of your mouth? Well, you let them speak. So today I'm lending from Professor Pat Utomi, who wrote a piece titled, Why You Gain Nothing from Ethnic Bias. Professor Utomi wrote, never get yourself involved in ethnic hatred or religious bias. He continues, I'm a Christian from Niger Delta, but most of the things I've ever achieved occurred through the help of non-Christians and non-Niger Deltans. Number one, he says, I was actually looking for a way to get a banking license once for a wealthy Nigerian. So I approached one Fulani prince, whom I had never met before. After telling him my mission, the Fulani prince told me that I should register my own bank instead of being another person's agent for registering a bank. I was shocked, wondering how an ordinary me would be able to afford the process of owning a bank. The Fulani prince told me that I should not worry, that he will get me a handling license and even arrange for wealthy Nigerians to patronize me as a help from me without, from him, without demanding any cobble. That was how Platinum Bank came into being, through the help of a northern Fulani, northern Nigerian I never knew in my life. He gave another example. I was a young graduate during the term of Shehu Shagari's administration. When one man came to my residence in a massive car with escorts and told me that the powerful Yoruba chief, Bayokuku, wanted to see me in his super mansion in Ikoi. I got there and the great chief, Bayokuku, told me that he had always read what I wrote on taxation policies and he had personally discussed me with the then Nigerian Vice President, Alex Ikweme. He proceeded to ask me how much I would receive if I were to write a single position paper for Ikweme on taxation policies. Back then, the price of a Volkswagen Beetle was 2,000 Naira. So I told him, 2,000 Naira. Chief Kuku laughed and said, so all those your grammar is only worth the price of a VW Beetle. Chief Kuku then opened a briefcase, brought out 10,000 Naira cash. Again, back then, a brand new Mercedes Benz was sold for 5,000 Naira. He gave that money to me at, to write the taxation paper, even though I've never met him before. When I was writing my PhD, I distributed my questionnaires as expected. 
One day, a man arrived in a big car with escorts and told me that his boss wanted to see me. I followed him, and when we got to the boss, I was shocked to, the marrow to, to my marrow to see that the boss was the highly powerful Al-Haji Abu Bakr Al-Haji. Al-Haji Al-Haji, a northern Muslim, told me that a fellow northern emir and I'd seen my questionnaire for my PhD and, and recommended that he, Al-Haji al -Haji, employ me as his PA on financial matters. I couldn't talk for almost two minutes because of the shock. You need to know how powerful al -Haji al -Haji was in those days. So to conclude, Professor Utomi says, I've been helped by Yorubas and northern Nigerians particularly Fulanis, for more than my own, far more than my own Niger Deltans. Don't allow anybody to push you into ethnic hatred and religious bias because only you stand to lose, not gain anything from it. Uh, yeah, I just find, I, I just find that uh, <laughs> Professor Tommy uh, must have had an extraordinary amount of luck that I, uh, he should, I don't know, should go and thank God properly because... <laughs> He's just too lucky. Yeah, but what's the luck? The luck is because he, he says, because what he's actually saying in that piece is that he's had a lot of help from northern Nigerians, Fulanis, mm -hmm. and a lot of help from Yorubas, not necessarily from his Niger Delton people. And that's not to put his Niger Deltans down. Yeah. He's saying that just because somebody is not from your place, mm -hmm. of your people, of your mm -hmm. person, doesn't mean that they can't be the one that helps you. Mm. Okay. No, I, I think what it is, I, I might as well say, is that mm. I'm, I'm very happy with the, because I'm not tribalistic, so mm. I'm happy, I'm sure I too have been helped more by other people than my people. Okay. I'm, I'm almost mm. too sure. Mm. I haven't, I will sit down and do it, do the whatever. But I just find the stories, I mean, the, the, the recollection, just incredibly, um, I mean, big cars pulling up, you know, I'm not saying it's impossible, but would I, he, I don't why get, would he lie I, I about get, such I things? I don't get big cars just pulling up at my but, but house. But because you're not Manchester Party, you tell me. And then I design all the best houses in Nigeria. And mm -hmm. When I ask for Mercedes money, I get Beetle money. You know, <laughs> so quite yeah, frankly. But, in your world. Yeah, so part to Tommy. But let me, let me come in, please, man. because I'm, I'm my own, I, I agree, like uh, Chuka, I think, <laughs> I agree with the um, uh, sentiments he's, he's driving oh, at. Yes, and, you know, because we, we really don't feel comfortable the way things are currently where people are jumping up at the slightest drop to you know, say this person is from this side and that side and, and run in different directions. And we know it's not true, that human beings are not like that, where you can just divide them according to the way they were born or the tribe they were born in, because people are varied and they come with varied personalities. So you may find a brother from the north, whereas you find an enemy from your, your mother's house. So we know that that's the truth. So people are appealing, but I, just to land my point, I, I want to hear what you have to say. I, I just My only issue with the article is that it's too too supplicating Correct. of the rich. And, yes. and it feels like it's really about him, not, not even about the people. Because if for me, I'm sorry to sound uh, sarcastic about it, if you are going to do any dividing, it's that he was encountering rich people. That's what all these people had in common. They were so rich. The yeah. great Bayokuku, the great al Haji, yeah. al how great. <laughs> and I'm like, it's a bit somehow to me. Yeah. And so if you really wanted to look at, okay, these people are all rich people. And you know what about the poor person who is stressed out? But I think you, know, you missed the point totally. That's what the message, totally. the message. Yeah. The message is the not point really totally. about no, that. I, I, I'm just exactly. making the point the that he didn't, didn't communicate it to me. Yeah, yeah. but you totally missed the point yeah. of that. Yeah. You don't, no, no, no. What she's criticizing is the go ahead. It doesn't. No, no, no. But but I if I if I write my experience, I don't like the great and the almighty. But it doesn't matter. It makes me get lost. The right message there is, you know, regardless of where you come from, you come from. Can get help. Yes. You know, I think we have we have a lot to learn from being a child. Thank you. You know, we we um, children don't have you know uh, biases. prejudices and biases and yes. things like that. We've lost we've lost all those lost values. We need to unlearn some of those things and allow. Look at um, uh, uh, Amadou Bello's uh, era. Mm -hmm. That era we had people from the north. North. Uh, comprising of people from Kogi, like uh, the Agric minister, mm -hmm. um, what's his name? Audogbe. Audogbe. He benefited from. He mm. was a Christian, mm -hmm. and you know, 
yeah. didn't speak a word of no. Hausa. Uh, he all. benefited from that yes. government. So that I think that's what he was He's trying, trying to, to highlight say. there. So you Regardless, getting upset that he met a lot of rich people, people. isn't there? No, I'm not upset. No, 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 I just don't but appreciate no, 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 but, the... Yeah, but I think you don't need to appreciate... No, but get away from the fact that he was meeting rich people. I did, which is why I made the point at the beginning that I agree with the sentiment, but but the framing of it just puts me off. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because if I write my life story and if I've been lucky that rich, I've encountered rich people along the paths of my life. Bully for whoever no, doesn't let like me, it. Let me, let me even um, make a comment on what um, Chuka said. Now, the way business works is it depends on your introduction into business. Okay. If you are introduced to a dangote, for instance, you cannot start having a popper by the street call you tomorrow for another business similar to exactly thank you, you absolutely do you understand so it, it is be only Dangote's natural friends that it, would it, get yes it, it is only natural for him to to experience because of the introduction to which he even started the yes. right up and yes. i was going to say something about because you mentioned something that if you ask for mercedes money they will give you a bit of money today mm -hmm. times have changed now people do not appreciate value now today's um, generation, you have to demand your Thank value. You. That's what I, I was just going to yeah, say. No, I, yeah. think, I think we're all agreed in yeah. terms of agreeing that we like the, the what message. he's yes. the message is passing yes. on. Mm -hmm. I'm just just for the record. I'm just saying that, irrespective of the people, I'm not even criticizing those people or that whether it happened or not. So in that sense, I'm not with Chuka. I'm just saying that he may not be conscious of this overly you know, the great bio cuckoo. He yes, may not I be conscious about right how off putting that is for some people. Well, like right you're missing the point. I don't like the write-up. I thought it makes you all. distrust the writer. I think it's awful. The message is brilliant and the write-up is awful. Mm. But, so the but hang on, hang on. The delivery, sorry, is awful. But you like it, and maybe three other people like it. Mm -hmm. you are, you, I'm not saying that we shouldn't all like it or we should condemn it. You are behaving as if I'm saying. No, that's I don't not what like I'm it. saying. I'm it saying it should be sort of like. Okay, it so let me help you. So okay. I have had an issue. A very burning issue with people using the word fulanization, Islamization, yeah. and I find it very, very derogatory. Right. When I read this, I'm like, okay, we have a problem with herdsmen, <laughs> right? We don't have a problem with Fulanese, and we need to be clear and c careful. And that's why I said we need to engage some sense and sensibility into how we talk and how we discuss. But yes, we need to discuss ranching, we need to discuss Ruga, but are we really denying? that a whole people are all murderers and marauders? Okay. Are we denying? Are we denying that the bandits who were on the streets before, who were attacking people on the Ore Benin, Benin Ore Road, they've all suddenly changed their uh, 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 ethnicities to, to Fulani. Can we just get some, and that's why I chose that, because people automatically are using words that are insensitive, they're igniting and, and they're xenophobic. Mm. And that's why I liked his piece, because he's saying, I'm a Niger Delton, and here are the people who have helped me. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. Thank that's you for reminding us fantastic. of that. This advocacy is as much about sounding a note of caution as it is about enlightenment and togetherness. After the break, Seydou speaks to a core building block of nation building. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. So the moment impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's really. disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, terrible. Like fire. <laughs> terrible strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Tackling a matter at the juggler is the recommended approach. The most important nation on earth is the family. The world is a victim of the family. If you can fix the family, you fix the nation. How is your family constituted? Do you have family vision and mission? What roles do each members play? Do you have family values? What is your family culture? Traditionally, a family is started by a man and a woman who decide on what their big picture or vision will be. They are from totally different backgrounds with different value system. They come together and a new tribe is formed 
where there must be an intentional alignment of values to achieve the said vision for this new nation. Roles are assigned with the man as the head of family and as such holds the position of prime minister or any designation, any designation decided as a family. He leads the best of interest. He leads with the best interest of the family at heart. The woman serves as a deputy and other roles assigned according to the strength and innate abilities of family members. The family constitution is drafted to guide the family towards achieving their vision. The constitution will address the do's and don'ts of the family. Issues bordering on finance are addressed. Immigration rules and so on are also addressed. Family culture is the unspoken thing that is common to all members of the family. This is as a result of shared values that guide them in achieving the family vision. A family without a vision, they say, ends up in division. So many societal ills can be eradicated if we pay attention to the family, as this micronation is a factory that produces to the big nation. Ah, should I go first? Please. It looks like it. it, looks like it. <laughs> Please. What do you mean it looks like I should? I think there are good some issues there that are. Uh, there are. Uh, are you. <laughs> no, thank you. You know, I've been away. I've been away, and clearly nobody said, you know, hashtag be warned. Yes. I did it funny <laughs> Pleased to hear him. Um, right. Because something is brewing. Happy. Yes. Not that I'm happy with it. Happy. But his message is okay. Come yeah. on, let's Elbow please. on the side. Please. No, but seriously, um, no, I like this and I like the way how you've literally, and, and this is important because when people see the nation as a microcosm Absolutely. of their immediacy, of their existence, they start to deal with it differently because if we learn from the last uh, topic that we've just discussed, I, and actually, as we finished, and I remember thinking, here I am, a Yoruba woman, proudly so, and my son's father, or my ex, if you like, or should I say my co-parent, is um, a Niger Delta, who I thought was from Fulham, but that's a whole different discussion <laughs> altogether. But in any event, you understand, so, and if we, if, if we look at it in that way, mm -hmm. you realize that your culture, as you said, your culture is formed from the togetherness, from the values that you share. Yes, and that that's down. what we need to identify, the values that we share. Has this, if you like, this combobulation called Nigeria, which we're yet to accept as a country. You know. However, that however there's no had, such thing about had to come. that whole the thing about male leader. <laughs> I no that, that, is, that, is, that is relative. Is relative. I'm speaking I as this. my my own understanding. I get it, you. It, it You're talking about the traditional. Thing. Traditionally, that's I, I why I use the word get, traditional. I'll let you get away with it. But there's nothing wrong with you know. male leader, female deputy. For well, no, actually, it could be. How about what's wrong with female leader, uh, male deputy? Male well, it has to be by, uh, by agreement, by consensus. Like I said, because somebody has to lead. That's really where I'm coming yes, from. And, uh, yeah. Yes, and yes, you know. But but yes. Yeah, so thank you, thank you for bringing well, on. Well, I, I think that's the message. Yeah, that's the message. That's the message, I think. It's a really important message that, that we can we take We need to away. go back to the basic, the unit, the family. It's important that we get, our, um, get the family fixed. And once we build that, we fix that micro-nation, then the country will be... Everything will take Everything will I, 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 I have to agree yeah. with Ereti and mm -hmm. obviously with you. I, I think it gives us something to do. A lot of times when we do advocacy, some of the struggles I have is when you're pointing the finger at government, you wonder, will they ever get to listen and actually take some notes? But at least if you're looking at yourself, you have something immediate you can work on that you can be confident will have an effect going down the line. Um, my only issues with it, uh, have I come too soon to my only issues? Let me, let me say some other positive things. Um, you know, I, I, I like the fact that you, what Iresi also pointed out, which I wrote down, you know, just by sharing the same space, you automatically have a shared culture. So these are things you take for granted until you stop and look at it and say, actually, because I, I coexist, even us here on The Advocate, mm, we, we, we're know, very different almost, in so you know, many almost, ways. Yeah. Almost by a kind of um, evolution, you know, some, some yeah. natural process, yeah. you yeah. begin to have things in common. It forms. So as long as you don't start, you know, letting all these divisive things come in between that, you'll find that you naturally will look for those places of common. The midpoint. So um, when Sorry, I mentioned the six. tribes, yeah, go on. yeah, when I mentioned tribes, you know, we come from different tribes. tribes. When you come together, 
Now you have to decide new tribe. what the new tribe is. Exactly. Yes, I, I and I love, that. I love that. That's nice. I love that. Yeah. I really yeah. love that. So, but my only, my only issue, which is probably more personal to me than a common thing, is that I've always been someone who resists when things are too rigid. So if you, even if we have roles, I like love to just sort of find a kind of intermediary. So even if you say, oh, I'm, my role is to look after the home, I like the fact that I find it very romantic if you came and did it once in oh, a while. Oh, yeah, but I don't think that's mm. what he's saying. You know, but, but, but when you start, because I, I discussed this with him, when you start yes. doing things like constitution, when yes. you start doing fixed, <laughs> yes, I find it just yes. too much. I, I, I would rather let your just, heart find Is it not place. playing on the strength because I think that's what you're saying is that we have different. So the woman's strength may be this, the male strength will be that. But when that. it's written so down, for instance, well, no, I don't think it necessarily means written down. Well, I think I, what you're talking well, about I, I, symbolism I, I, rather than actual. No, we could have it written down. I oh would my word! I've had that discussion yeah, yeah, yeah. with him. Yeah, would have it. You can have family constitution. People it just keeps have. you. It keeps you focused. You know where you're going. As a family, we stand God first. We hold each other. No, we, we don't leave anybody, anybody behind. You know, we you know stand for each other. We don't criticize anybody. Now, there's a, there's they something with visuals. Themselves. Do you understand? When you see every day, it reminds you that this is who we are. Eventually, it sticks in there, particularly the younger ones. So, yeah, I, I would like for you to have that constitution or your mission statement. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I, 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 I love, yeah. I love um, and the what he said, um, what yeah. oh. Seydou said, sorry. Um, the truth is, for me, I think every human being should have a personal vision. This is even outside of your family. Okay. As a human being, you should have a vision. That's why we have a lot of people directionless. Mm. They just go in, they don't know where they're mm. going, right, and right. you just I want to leave it as the day comes, mm. whatever, whatever. No, you should be deliberate about your life. Yes, yes. And when you also decide to know, come, I tell people, okay, I have two children. People say, oh, why are you not having more? I said, no, because I, I know what it takes. There goes. No, I know what it takes. For another to, day. <laughs> I know what it, it takes to raise another human being. So Absolutely. what you need, the emotional, investment, the time and everything. If I do not have that now, there is no point bringing in more children into this world. And I see a lot of families making that mistake. Struggling. Struggling in that aspect. So you have a lot of children, you don't even know what your child, because every child is unique. So for families, and that's why we have a problem in the larger society, because yeah. we do not have structure, because all these people that are embezzling, they came from a home. And if you look at it, if we start to fix the home, Everything else will go bigger, and, and we'll and get a, remember, a bigger solution. Well, uh, I said um, it starts with the vision. Yeah, you know, the family decides on where what they the big picture to. is. Now, to achieve this, we need to, ask, uh, you know, delegate each person responsibility. Or, this is yeah. what you'll do to achieve that big picture. Right. So constantly, you need to be guided. It's I don't like know if I agree with this constitution. Well, I, want to, I want to throw in a spanner though, because you you I mentioned did. something about. <laughs> Feminism, and this is where I, I think I have a problem with women that come out to say they're feminist and all of those things. You cannot take away the role, you know. You cannot take away the role of um, of a man when it comes to um, building. No, yes, raising. So I love what you said about co-parenting. Some people believe I can do this by myself. Some of them are forced to do it by themselves. Yes, wow. but we, can we That's find a can we find a way? No, no, yeah, no. no. can we find a way to? Work? I don't believe there's anybody that is like a, a brick wall that you cannot. Oh, yes, then everybody you has a language. Who have suffered? No, no I'm sorry. Much as language. I'm lucky. Yes. Sorry, Papi, you come in. Yes. Much as I am really, really lucky, and I appreciate the luck that I have of having a co-parent, right in my son's father, right? Not, and I know that a lot of women who desperately want that do not get that. I mean, with I'm, regards I'm, to no, Seudu no, family no, values. No, I, I think I, I, do you have a I, constitution I, in your No, he doesn't. Um, uh, I, 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 I've, been, I've been happy, good, lucky. Oh, yeah, I knew no, I'm just, yeah, I'm, yeah, that's right. I'm just kidding. I think, I am, I, I think it's very difficult to, if, if you, you know, I'm the kind of person that they say, if you follow me, you miss road. Mm. Uh -huh, because I don't know how I'm doing what I'm doing. But it's, it's just know, it's working. I agree. Um, it's working, yes. So, yeah. you know, don't follow me. But um, I don't know. I, I find the whole thing of um, the role, the, you know, the, because you know, Seydou made it clear who was the prime minister. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, the, one side of me believes that I uh, know all human beings are equal and can interchange. Another side of me, which might actually be indoctrination from, yes, from life, yes. is that men lead. 
Someone it has is to indoctrination. Someone has to lead, though. And, and that one is certain. You know, I said it is yeah. indoctrination. And you're not going to get that. No, it's not necessarily. You're not going to get that. Culture and religion that the men are there. Yeah, but culture and religion is indoctrination. You have to believe it. You don't have to call it indoctrination. When you've been told the same thing from a child. No, if you believe it, you've adopted it. When you've been told it's not imposed on you. You know, you know, you can learn a lot from nature. You can choose to believe it. Just look around you, the animals, the wild. How is how they set up? I'm they tell this. us that it's the male and the female again. Yeah, and you so see the lion, the male, the yes. lion, you know. Yeah. But is it true? Taking charge but for the others. True? When you're not watching I mean, the lions, we, we are you sure? Sure? I just feel that love will always find a way to communicate that doesn't stay within a rigid space. Mm. Because at the end of the day, what, I, what I, are you I communicating if it's not, not love? So man leading. <laughs> No, I, think, I think it's just it's just your interpretation of lead. Lead in itself, it's service. Yeah. Right. It, you know, maybe the perception you have See the eye of that leading I'm is you. like that. You like know, you take the control and, the and everybody follows. Yeah. Yeah. You could suggest yeah. something and we that. deliberate about service. it. <laughs> Conversations aimed at reaching some sort of consensus is the way forward. I think you'd agree. After the break, I can I ask an interesting question? Do you feel like a fraud? Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. So the moment impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very, 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 very <laughs> terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You're watching The Advocate on PLUS TV Africa. Honesty is the best policy, especially when it comes to speaking the truth to yourself. Apparently, 70% of us suffer from imposter syndrome at some point in our lives, according to a review article published in the International Journal of Behavioral Science. Imposter what? I hear you ask. That feeling that you don't deserve or qualify for your successes in life. Essentially, that you're a fraud. I came across this condition whilst watching men's tennis, the Wimbledon finals, believe it or not. My older sister remarked that whereas the men played like they deserved to be on the big stage, the women seemed almost to apologize for being there. Attitude makes all the difference. Although research has since sought to reverse the view that women are more likely to suffer from imposter syndrome, I maintain, as a woman, that this is our Achilles heel. It is as a result of the fact that, though much has changed and is changing, women are largely still socialized into feeling like second-class citizens. One of my colleagues recently even suggested that there is a biblical basis for asserting that women were an afterthought, balderdash. The truth is, it is as unscriptural a thought as they come. Anyway, as I listened with engrossed interest as my sister expounded on how this syndrome was a product of a person internalizing their failures and externalizing their successes. In other words, if they do well, it is due to their circumstances or due to circumstances outside themselves, luck, a supportive spouse, serendipity. Whereas when they fail, it is always down to them. It is always because they're not enough in one shape or form. In a nutshell, they are suffocatingly hard on themselves. I listened and I listened and the Kobo dropped. <laughs> I have suffered from imposter syndrome. Wow. <laughs> Forgive me if I seem excited, but this is only because acknowledging the challenge puts us squarely on the path to taking ownership of our life, our successes, our weaknesses and everything in between. So, as we boldly embark on this uncharted terrain, I encourage every one of us to take a long, unabashed, accepting look in the mirror. We need to learn to like and even love what we see without seeking to instantly modify it. Our beauty lies in our uniqueness. Think of all the years of suppressed self-expression and give it voice today. Say to yourself, I am the real deal. Now, doesn't that make you feel good? Of course, absolutely. <laughs>
I don't know. I, just, I, I started to understand what you were saying about imposter syndrome in a different way. Because what I thought it was, quite simply, was, um, you know, maybe, OK, basically, just not being who you really are in order no. to benefit, in order to benefit. So, for instance, I, I you know, I, 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 I could have joked to myself that, oh, maybe I'm suffering from imposter syndrome right now. This, they set some stage in your life, right? So it wasn't every day, yes, but right now. Is, yeah. uh, because I look back and I think to myself, um, I, am, I am a shy person. Very, very, very shy. Who would to know the it? point <laughs> where teachers would make comments in my report about absolute quietness in class. Okay. And it happened even when I was doing my A-levels. And there will obviously be different reasons that make you get quiet. A-levels are shipped off to England. That's another cause for quietness. Because now you're making me face a class of white people. And I was already shy yeah, in too. Nigeria. So okay. I would just be quiet there. And it took me a while to whatever. But one day I just thought to myself, why am I even shy? It's not going to benefit me anything now. You know, it won't help me with women. It won't help me with anything. <laughs> Which is essential. <laughs> Which is very essential, you know. <laughs> so I decided that I'm not going to be shy again. So I started to become uh, an imposter. And, uh, but, OK, you and, inhabit a and, different personality. Oh, yes, and I'm now. You reinvented and, uh, yes, yourself. So don't worry, I've reinvented myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I thought that was imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome is um, it, and something I've been aware of for years. Um, okay. I, I don't think I suffer from it, by the way. And I think there's, I'm going to deal with it from two points. So the first point is, it's often very common amongst creatives. And uh, number one, number two is, it's a case of thinking, I do not deserve this success. Oh, that's mm -hmm. incredible. It's about, which is why I said you are not yeah, no, an no. imposter no, because <laughs> you are an excellent architect who deserved who deserves all the success you've had, and we know they should pay you more than 2,000. No, but so whether, he, whether he believes does, <laughs> he believe it. it. Oh, no, but, no, and I this know. is the thing. It's, yeah, it, I mean, no, clearly I, it does. I thought it meant something Yeah, else. no, 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 but that's yeah. what it means. Mm. So okay. that's number one. Number two is, and why don't I suffer from it? And I'll tell you why, why a lot of women do suffer from it. Okay, you agree that we I remind do. you, oh, yes, it's common with women, okay. but it's common with creatives across the board, okay. right? I remind you of something that happened with you and I. Okay. You once came into makeup, and I think I was dressed in one of my usual African flamboyant way, not dissimilar to the one I had this hair or whatever. And, and you said, oh, you know, you paid me a compliment. And I said, yes, I am. Thank you. And you're like, oh. Was I? Now, yes. Now, what happens is you are expected to play down your strength. You are expected to play down your successes. You are not expected. And my sister, I remember my sister always says, she said, you know, when she gives speech of people are like, Bibi, you're fabulous. She's like, I know, it's wonderful, isn't it? Eriti, don't be afraid to say that. Mm -hmm. And I think that is it. Now, that's the one example. The other example why it's so common with women is part of the conditioning that I keep trying to teach you guys about how genderizing is actually debilitating us, right? Now, think about it. A, a woman does something for her man, buys, her a car, buys him a car, pays for the house to be built. Do you hear her saying, oh, I did this for him, I know. But if he does something for her, right? If he's the one that bought her a car, if he's the one, if they put money together to build the house, what are everybody gonna say? Ah, Seidu has built a house, Chuka has built a house. They're not gonna know, and she's gonna be quiet. This is my point. She she's to gonna be quiet look. and not say, hang on a minute, you and I shared that money together. It's a, mind, it's a mindset that you have. It's shifting. We're having... Yeah. It's not a changed. mindset. How many of your it friends is. come and tell you, come on, how many of your friends who's... No, where the we'll wife and the husband, right, have put money together. And what I'm saying is, how many of your <laughs> friends would they come and say to you, my wife. oh, my wife and I are the ones that put money together. It's not a mindset. It is a it's fact. Changing, it exists. It's, it's, it's changing. changing. It's, it's true. It's yes, changing. Now. And I'll tell you why. See, the reason why a man would not say something like that is because of pride, right? By, by default, the man is supposed to care for the family. There we go, the whole I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yes. So it's, it's a thing of pride to say, oh, I'm 
taking charge of my family. I can provide for my family. You don't go telling people that, oh, sorry, I can't take care of my family. It's my wife that's supporting. While there's nothing wrong with it, you don't want to... I'm not saying she supported. She contributed. Advertise or share that. that. Contribution is you know, it's played down. Shame. Yeah. I think, I, I, think I want so, to take it back to what we're talking about mm -hmm. earlier, raising yeah. families. Now, I have boys. I don't have any girls. I'm raising them to understand what you just said. Yeah. So you need to understand that it is okay. You're Thank allowed you. to be emotional. You're allowed to cry. Yes. Don't give. Don't give that uh, because you are. Don't a man. franchise it out. Yeah, to, because yes. So that was part of the point I was trying to make. When egos start to play out, it destroys a lot of things that would have easily been resolved. resolved. And it's not about women because women in the African climb are the women that do not like. If you tell me I'm beautiful, I'll tell you. Yeah, I know. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Okay. You know, but some people, oh, are you sure? Are you serious? You need to start building people that are confident of themselves, that understand self-love, the concept mm -hmm. of self-love. And men, being a man does not, your role as a man does not mean that you must be the provider. I know we've <laughs> looked at it from the female Finally, male, but I, I would just same, quickly please. drop in there before we move on that it actually can exhibit itself. Even amongst the young in Nigeria, you find that they're, they're, they're almost like, they feel like imposters, I think, because society hasn't given them the ability to to own their but space. But it's okay as a young you know? person, you're so, still finding your space. Yeah, but like, I know, you know, like, like now, you don't have enough young people in leadership because they, they may have that imposter syndrome working itself out because you have the older generation who are still blocking. They're not giving them a chance to feel that they're deserving to go and lead Nigeria But forward. they still need to is cross it, over is, is and fall down because and get of But anyway, um, still in the mode of reflection, let's take some of your comments from our social media platforms. Still in the mode of reflection, let's take some of your comments for our so from our social media platforms. Aishaiku Christian says, thank you for producing this show. Please keep saying it. This show makes me have hope in the new Nigeria to come. Thank you, Christian. We'll keep advocating for a better society. Concerning inferiority complex, Tony Toreba says, the fact is that we have very creative, brilliant Nigerians inside and outside the country. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, they suffer from lack of support. How will they, how will they build their portfolio when the rich don't believe in them? As you say, it is inferiority complex. Many rich people just don't believe in Nigerians as they should. It's a shame because even before colonial times, our people did not, did not lack creativity or ingenuity. It has taken decades for Nigerian musicians to be fully respected in their country. Perhaps in a while, other creatives will get their due. Thank you for that. On the matter of the gap between the rich and the poor, Ada Odibu Brown says, saw your brief post, on education, I'll tell you my take. Deliberate or not, I don't know, but I think there's really one central issue, our examination bodies, JAM, YEC, NECO. A few years ago, this time in a state-owned school, they were asked to contribute money on the day of mathematics so the invigilator could let them cheat. My ward and a few others refused. They were taken out into another room where they did their exam, but their papers were also collected prematurely once the cheating group were finished. It's just so sad. So sad, Ada. It's really, <laughs> yeah. Do keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG. And remember, to catch up with the previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com uh, slash The Advocates. So time to go on a brief break, and when we return, Chuka looks set to sing us some reggae blues. You see me? As a musical genius once said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Now, it was in 1984 that Jamaican reggae great Don Carlos and his support group, The Gladiators, sang Blackout in the Ghetto, one of the greatest songs from one of the best. There was always a smile on my face back then whenever I listened to it because the situation was no different in Nigeria. Carlos sang, only sang how it affected the ghetto residents of Kingston. It was the life he knew. So when I listened on Sky News on the Sunday morning, 14th of July, 2019, that New York experienced a major blackout that affected at least 77,000 subscribers in Manhattan, same smile came on my face, but in a different way. This time, this made world news. The last such blackout was in 1977. Jennifer Lopez, also known as J-Lo, was interrupted mid-concert 
traffic lights went out and common citizens took to directing traffic. Subway stations were dark. The governor came out to make a statement. Five hours later, and there was light. In Nigeria, we refer to these New Yorkers as ajebotas. In other words, pampered softies. Here in Nigeria, it's not just ghetto blackout. It's all out blackout. No one is spared, rich or poor. The better off resort to owning diesel power generators, power batteries powered by inverters, anything that can supplement power. We've been doing this all through the 58 plus years of Nigeria's independence. And it may not really change for the next 50, at least. Whereas the world may not be a ghetto, apologies to George Benson, Nigeria is certainly close to being one large ghetto of 200 million people. Look around here, nothing works. Gutters are open, roads bad, no hospitals, schools or places of refuge, expensive church auditoria, private jets parked in substandard airports, presidential motorcades 50 cars long. Wait at the gates to the exclusive Banana Island in Ikui in Lagos for five minutes and count how many cars live in convoy with armed policemen in tow. If Banana Island is not a ghetto, then its inhabitants largely live with a ghetto mentality. And that sucks. The longer the sun shines in Nigeria, the happier we are. It's the free light we have been given. And no corrupt government can take that away from us. And whenever there is a bright or full moon, it is such a wonderful bonus. I remember having my children fall asleep in the garden in years back and then having to carry them into bed one after the other. Call it romanticization, but that is the mentality that gets you through ghetto lifestyle imposed on the entire nation. If you want to know how beautiful a home is, open the doors and windows, let in light and fresh air. That is real life. The ghetto mentality of the air-conditioned prison that many call home or workplace is a sad trap that afflicts most of those who can actually afford it. So while there are economic hardships that result from power shortage, there are lifestyle choices that can improve our lives and reduce depression and sadness. All right, that's enough. Since we have at least another 50 years of blackouts, let's live healthy and free. Let's shake off the ghetto mentality. <laughs> no, so let, me, let me give you high five, chicken. Ah, thank you, finally. And <laughs> finally. And for atomic energy. That's the track you started with Yes, now. that's right. Right, so. but I mean, look, do you want me to start? Okay, Go I'll on. start. And first start. of all, I laughed, I smiled. I loved it when J-Lo got all upset, saying, oh, <laughs> my concert. And I'm like, eh. And they say, over 77,000 people were in a blackout for four or five hours. Oh, and, you know, the big lights of, of uh, what's it? Times, uh, Times Square. Square the was, big build was, was dark. And I'm like, really? Really? Is yeah. that all? <laughs> as in how? <laughs> as Pawati? Yeah. What? Well, well, ah, you people are blessed. In fact, you know what we always say? Mm. It's because you have water. If you didn't have yeah, water, water, you won't have time to worry about this yeah. thing. So I love what you said, and this is the thing that I want to bring out of it. You mentioned something about open your windows, um, what you say, open your windows, let in light. I don't have curtains mm. in my home. Mm. I, and that's one of the choices that I made when I lived. I refused to live as a prisoner mm. in a place that I love so much. Oh, that's right? Yeah, it is. Mm. And I'm so touched. Honestly, I think... Um, for me, I'll say that what we have now mm -hmm. and the leadership they say of any nation is a reflection of its people. It's sad what we're experiencing. I think we deserve more. Yes, of course. You know, we, deserve, we deserve better. We have, we have, look around, Nigerians are doing great things around the world. Mm -hmm. And, and we shouldn't be, you know. Uh, we had uh, the first uh, TV station. We had first, first in Africa. What happened to all of those achievements? You know, we need to really look back. Again, it takes us back to family. You know, yeah. we probably have yeah. to do the reset from fam yeah. family yeah. where we set values, you know. I was going to even add, um, First add I think it was um, the governor of Port Harcourt, um, mm. was it wrote to me that, that insisted that they bring, they wrote to me, I mean, bring the fences down in Port Harcourt. I you know no that, idea. That, that part of um, <laughs> where you were saying we live yeah. like prisoners, yes. and I yeah. completely agree. Mm. Because when I was growing up, we don't have you know, high fences mm -hmm. and all of those things. You're able to, so because now, um, th the neighborhood I live in, yeah. somebody died there four days. Oh my. 
right. Nobody knew. Well, in Lagos? In Lagos here. Nobody knew the man was dead. Gosh. You know, he lives alone. He lives no alone. No maid. No, you know, he lives alone in the home. So, you know, that part of us living Together. as prisoners, Good you know, neighbors. you know, I really love that part. Lifestyle, because me, I, I'm very particular about the part of lifestyle mm. you talked about. Yes. How many playgrounds, how many, um, how many um, places do we have that children, for instance, in a community can, can come and play? Can play. Yeah. You know, yeah. we don't have any of those things. Um, I like, I love your write-up. I think it's really, you know, it's, it's poetic. And I think the, the it's, it's sort of like a vehicle for the message you're conveying. Because yeah. it gets you in a nostalgic mood. Mm. I, you know, I found myself remembering you know, when we grew up and how we used to sit on the veranda yeah. and listen to stories you know, under the moonlight. You grew up in a compound, right? Uh, let's leave well, that. No, let, let, just, let me make my point. Why I ask. I'm coming, I'm coming. I still want to make my point. But so with all that in, in my mind, I was sort of saying to myself, there is, when you talk of uh, ghetto mentality, it really boils down to the fact that you can, with your own mind, mm. you know, it, it all starts from how you see yourself right. and you see others. Like talking about communal living, where I live now, a block of flats, um, the lady there, I'm so, you know, I admire her because she came in after I got there, but she's really made an effort to form a group and she invites people to tea and she does all these things that forms, has created more of a communal you have to be environment now, yeah. Yeah, than when I got there. You know, now you can actually walk in someone's home and, and have a coffee with them because of what she's deliberately done. Yeah. She's made sure she has repeated events every, oh, her children's birthdays and she has lots of children. She invites us <laughs> to them yeah. and we come Not and she's a very us. hospitable person. Her, <laughs> yeah. home, her home is always open. But she's us. made us, and we have so many people from different backgrounds, but because of her, she's like a uniting point. So I, 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 there, there are genuine reasons why people want to be cautious, you know. In the past, people were in, they were in issues Kidnappers. of kidnapping mm -hmm. and, you know. So these are some of the things. We might need to go back to the basics. Provide, provide for that average person. If the poverty level is this much, mm -hmm. yes. honestly, you mm -hmm. can't sleep with both eyes closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a problem. I, yeah. And the minute we begin to think about the next person, how we would right. help that person, not okay. for ourselves, not for them, yeah. but for ourselves, yeah. then we can sleep in peace. And well, it's interesting how talking about a revolution sometimes sounds like a whisper. Uwa is not just a fresh face and is out to reverse an apparent adverse effect of social media revolution after the break. There's such a thing as too much honey. Social media has changed everything. It has shaped mass culture in a huge way. By changing the way we communicate with one another, social media has turned an entire generation into narcissists. Just for clarity, the dictionary defines a narcissist as a person who has an excessive interest in or admiration for themselves. Someone who thinks the world revolves around them. We would rather spend our free time taking deceptive selfies and editing them to make ourselves more attractive, mm -hmm. so we can post to all our social media accounts. Social media platforms are overflowing with masses of individuals competing with one another for followers, shares, likes, tweets, and things along those lines. We yearn for validation and need to affirm our egos in any way that we can. Who would have predicted how much social media would take over our lives? Many have become experts in posting content that give the illusion of success and fulfillment. It is therefore turning us into very self-centered people. Our teenagers hardly leave their rooms, wasting hours on social media. Some people claim we are more connected thanks to social media, but in some ways we are more separated, more broken. Could there be something more sinister going on here? Could it be that by creating a world of self-obsessed narcissists who believe anything we are fed via social media lack the capacity to care enough about anything but ourselves, to take action against important issues? Isn't it time we log out of social media for a little and reconnect with each other? Isn't it time we wake up from our world of make belief and take steps to positively impact our real world? Isn't it time? <laughs> <laughs> it's all so doom think, and gloom, doesn't it? I think it's the real world. Mm. This you think social media, media is the real world? It's, it's, part, it's, of reality. Reality. it's part of it's a reality. Our reality now. It, yes, it's part of but why, why are we denying if I want myself to look like Denzel Washington and so I do my photographs in that way, 
Can I, I get more bright I, price I get, for you? I, 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 yeah, and you get more bright price, and girls are all over me, and then I, I, and I get them because I still have to do some work to get whatever mm. I want. Mm. So that I do a glossed over picture, the girl is going to come and no, say, but I know you're one, being ugly funny, man. but we all but, accept that there. But okay. no, I, I, I will make the point. Mm. You, know, you see, so it's part of our reality. It's, a, it's something that is new to us, and we're going to manage, we're trying to manage it, mm. and we're going to get somewhere eventually. There are going to be some people that are going to be casualties. Mm. That's what you are worried about. What the what 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 Ua has just read out does not tell us whether the casualties are so many and the gains are so little We're that, not we, should, that we should cut. Yeah, that yeah. we should just cut and go back quickly, take mm. the reel back and shut down yeah, Facebook says. and everything. Mm. Because I suspect that it's the other way around. No, but you, even if the casualties it's, were like one percent. It's yes. not even saying that you need to shut down. It's, yes. For me, the way I see that message, it's, it's more about caution. It's like saying use with caution. So even if one person is so deluded about their life, because you're talking about, you know, the human being is such a fragile entity sometimes. And, you know, especially when you look at the suicide rates and things like that, I think there's a link. You know, if you're living in a world, and for me, it's a bit chilling. I don't know to what extent it's true, like you say, that's the only mm -hmm. challenge you have. But it's a bit chilling to imagine someone who is getting more and more isolated and more introverted and more into themselves in a very unattractive way as a result of the selfie thing, as a result of likes and dislikes. I, I, I'm trying to imagine that kind of a person who maybe didn't start off like that. And because of interacting on social media so much and getting addicted to that lifestyle, they become more self-obsessed. I'm trying to imagine that person, I'm and it would be a sad like, situation. I'm suspecting they were always like that, and I'm suspecting also that we're hearing more Social about... Social media just brought out just who gave them an avenue to express you that. Know, yeah. It's so easy to say this you man know. was on Facebook, and now he went berserk, and he killed 12 people. Okay. It's like feeding an appetite then. Yeah. Yeah. People were killing 12 people before, before social, social media, media came along. Yeah, but maybe and it's then, feeding and, and the appetite. the worst part of it was that there was no social media so we didn't splash know they were it, to even splash it out on us quickly. But you know, this is a reality now, technology, and you have to live with it. I mean, we just have to in all our spheres, yes. Tech, um, manufacturing, you yes. know, we're now having robots taking over. Correct. So how do we deal with it? Okay. We need to be intentional. Mm. Yeah. Again, yes. you know, you need yeah. to drop those, the, your laptops and uh, phones for a bit. <laughs> and have some time. And speak with people. Mm. Actually talk to them. When they don't, don't want to talk, they don't want to talk to you yeah. anymore. They don't they want to talk. Hey now, so what right. do you do now? So Let you keep talking to you. them again on uh, Instagram. Exactly. Send me a DM me or what DM. it is. To but say. if you look slide at some into people, your DM, slide into my DM. <laughs> Social media has <laughs> helped <laughs> a lot of yes. people. Yes, it know, has brought a lot of businesses dreams. for people, people that you probably will never have heard about. Yes, you know, like the little boy I saw um, that's selling um, oranges and he sings so well. Beautifully, I saw that. They found the guy. You know, that's what social. So it has. Positives and, and, the, yeah, positives and, and the negatives. You know, so, but we just need to be intentional yes. to, you know, just regulate this thing and encourage more human contact as much as possible. Selfies has actually been also taken away from the narcissist to be Even, actually yes. a connection. We take yeah. selfies when we finish yeah. as a group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't see each one of us going, cool. Ka, kaka. No. Do you understand me? So it's been taken as a way of us, a, a sort of camaraderie, a togetherness, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and as a memory of what, what you spend. So that's the part I totally disagree with. But do you not see that? I think the fact that it's a generation, do you not see that it's possible? I don't know that people who have not grown up without social media, they're coming into life and they think People this who is have not norm. grown up without social media. Yeah, as, in, as they came what into life, were they born? Oh. Millennials, I don't know. Millennials, millennials are social media. We said millennials are no, 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 the children. No, maybe I'm not saying it properly. I'm saying people who Instagram. have not been without social media. <laughs> there are so that's every what I'm existence saying. they've so had from the beginning. Their socialization was yes. around social, social media. media. Okay, so no, they don't so know a life outside of that. So okay, so okay, let, could let me that generation. Okay, let me give you. Let me give you. So there's a whole generation of parents. There's a whole group of parents now who are actually monitoring their children from the amount of social media, and actually a lot of them, and guess what? From San Francisco, mm. the, the place the tech, where the social media, the yeah, the tech capital of the world mm. in, in um, San Francisco. So I get what Ekene is saying in that, and it's about that control, mm. controlling it as a diet so you don't over consume it. Mm. And you know, like everything else, you, it leads to obesity, mm. you understand mm. me? Mm. Um, so if you like call it digital obesity, I think is what we're talking about. That's number one. Number two is, but I, I bring it back and I say, look, 
I haven't just come. It's, it's incredible what technology. And when I read this, this script, and I thought to myself, no, this is not about, you're not seeing the full impact and the power, the positivity of it. Because in all positives, there will be a negative, of course. right? So let's put the, po the, the, the positive overrides the negative. Let's look at what's happened in Nigeria in the last few years. Ruga has been, um, what's it called? Blonde. It's been withdrawn Unhold, yeah. as a result of social media noise, mm -hmm. right? People are coming out talking about their experience of rape as a result of social media noise. So our conversations, our behavior, our yeah, you're, you're everything at it is as being if you're weighing No, no, no. For I'm looking and at, against. I know. I'm, I'm know. saying to you that the for the positives, the power and yes, the benefits saying, that yeah. it brings, it overrides the narcissist, no, but that, the that, selfie. That, that, that there are young that. people. Yes, and there will always be weak young people. So let's stop trying to, trying to bring up, you know, snowflakes. Look, but I'm not going to like you. You're not going to like me. That's life. Get on with it. But I and I'm going to tell my son that. And if you don't get 100 likes, so what? Yeah, yeah. Get so over yourself. That's, th that's where we need to draw the line. You know, where get people are confident in themselves, regardless yes. of the Because I saw a post this just um, a few minutes ago about um, um, Instagram, Instagram blocking. changing. Yeah, blocking and not showing people the likes and all of those things. I said, that doesn't solve the problem. Because, it doesn't. You know, you have to be confident. Of course. And you should be. self regulated you, you must be emotional stable to handle the pressure that come with because there are also a lot of positives Pressures just to strike a balance know, yeah. you know my friend also took a break from social media she just got tired because she was she found out that was she was getting yeah she was time. it was taking a toll on her she was getting depressed the lights were not coming so on her own she said exactly. let me take a break and by the time she came back she was feeling a lot better but that's the so I think we should yes, manage it's yes addictive yes it's it's addictive. Addictive. So, so the point we're making is not even the snowflake thing yeah. Yeah. Not even the for or against. It's just say, look, manage it. Caution. Yes, it's like, manage um, it. Oh, yeah, like yeah. everything else. Mm. <laughs> don't obese on it and don't <laughs> overeat. So I call it digital obesity. Mm. Yeah. Bec that's it. Because everything, if you take it in moderation, yeah, sure, is okay. okay. Mm. If you take it in excess, excess that's it's where not. The problem is. I guess the really, thing is, it's, think, it really isn't easy to draw the line. With social so media. Yes, you've posted something today. So you want to go and check. You want to check. So how did people respond, respond to it? To you know, it, yes. what, what, what are they not, saying? You yes. know, and you yeah, find yourself... So it's a conscious thing. Sure yeah. it's, right it's, track. it's very difficult to draw that yeah. line. And yeah. you just find yourself being drawn in. So yeah. I think you should get busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I, I think my you get, get busy. when you get busy, you will not remember you your remember. phone. Trust yes. me, Or you exactly. check it when you're going to bed at night. What is maybe your job? to do? Well, that's a wrap on this week's edition, but let's not end the conversation here. Do keep your comments coming in all our social media platform on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. Till next week, same time, when we'll be taking on the topics that gets you talking. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Bye. Happy Bye. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's a terrible, strategy. Strategy. Like a terrible, <laughs> terrible strategy. strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.